Ephesians, the second chapter. I'm going to try to sing a song for you this morning that goes along with this morning's message that I haven't sang in a church service probably for 20 years, maybe better than that. Hallelujah. His name was hopeless. He lived in a town called Misery. His friends, pain and heartache, they lived just down the street. And every time he tried to get out of town, one of them would stand in his way. One thing for sure about old Hopeless Is he always lived up to his name Then one day he got the news Of a new road that was coming in It was a street that they called love And it came right to where he lived So he started walking Following the signs to a place called Calvary He took a right turn at the crossroad And it led him up to victory Now they call him Hope for short His own name don't fit anymore Well, he lost some friends when he left that old town you ought to see who's been coming around Peace comes over and he won't leave And joy is just like family He ain't hopeless anymore That's why they call him Hope for short Oh, hallelujah Are you thankful for hope this morning? Well, I was that man named Hopeless I was hopeless as I could be Well, the love built a road Right to where I was And it led me to Calvary And you may be out there thinking That you've tried and failed before But on this road called love You get help from above you don't have to be hopeless anymore And now they call him Hope for short His old name don't fit anymore Well, he lost some friends when he left that old town But you ought to see who's been coming around Peace comes over and he won't leave And joy is just like family No, he's not hopeless anymore And that's why they call him Hope for sure No, I'm not hopeless anymore That's why they call me Hope for sure Well, I'll give the Lord a hand clap for hope this morning. Amen? Don't have to be hopeless anymore Amen. Unless you couldn't guess, we're going to talk about hope for a few minutes this morning till I'm done or till the boats get louder than I do. Amen. And then I might be done quicker. Now, don't sit there and pray that they fire the boats up here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Time, going to talk about how Brother Stephen Houston this morning said, Brother, you're louder than any boat I ever heard. Hallelujah. <laughs> my, my, my. Maybe so, but I don't know if I'm louder than 15 or 20 of them. My goodness. The English word for hope Sometimes, most of the time, has an element of uncertainty to it. You know, we say like, well, I sure hope so, with a whole lot of doubt. But the Greek words in the New Testament always speak of a sure expectation of some good outcome or positive results. Have you ever heard somebody say, maybe you've said it about someone, maybe it's been said about you, they have given up hope and they won't last long. Amen? 
You see, someone said this, giving up hope leads to dire straits. They went on to say that you can live with sickness. You can live with loss. But you cannot live long without hope. And even if you do, it will be a miserable life. Amen? Amen. Talking about hope this morning. Webster's says that hope is to feel that something desired may happen. To place your trust. To feel that whatever is wanted can be had. Or that events that are happening in your life will turn out for the best or for your good. We have never today lived in a society where there are more people that, seem, that feel as though they are hopeless and that their life is hopeless. Amen? The suicide rate among teenagers of all people, teens who have their entire life to look forward to them, to look forward to for them, committing suicide, Brother Jim, when I was a teenager, umpteen years ago, you never heard of that. Amen? No. I think one boy, and that was after he got out of school and, and after he joined the military and a bunch of stuff happened, he didn't want to go back, but he committed suicide. But other than that, I don't remember hearing of any children that I went to school with or even they wouldn't keep up with the, with the news good. But I know that the experts say that the suicide rate among teens... The suicide rate in general has never been higher. But the suicide rate among teens has never been higher than it is today. The devil convinces them that they have no hopeless. We're talking about 13, 14, 15 year old kids that have an entire life ahead of them, Lord willing, and opportunities and, and a life they can have. The enemy convincing them that there's no hope for them, whether he does it through bullying or whether he does it through abuse from the parents or maybe he just does it by mental manipulation, but he convinces them there's no reason to go on and that they have no hope. And because of that, they decide to take their life, not realizing that, that then when they do that, they really don't have any hope left. Amen? As long as there's breath in your body today, you have hope. You may be out there today and you're lost and undone without God and you feel hopeless. There is hope for you today that can be found in Jesus Christ. Amen. The only place, Brother Jim, that hope can be found today is in Jesus Christ and His shed blood and His finished work this morning. Don't let the devil convince you that the situation is hopeless. Because with God, nothing is impossible. Amen? With God, nothing is hopeless. No matter what you're facing or going through today, if you hold on to Him, there is hope to be found. Amen? There is hope. And so many today searching for hope and happiness in anything and everything. Drugs, illicit sexual relationships, whatever. Looking for it in psychology. You won't find any hope on the leather couch at the psychiatrist's office. Amen? The only thing He'll do is cause you to blame your problems on somebody else. Amen? What we really need to do is look into the mirror of God's Word and see who we are and what we are without Him and who we are and what we can be with Him. Amen? Through His saving blood. There is hope today, but it cannot be found in most of the things that people are looking for hope in. Real hope cannot be found in a political party. Amen? Real hope cannot be found in wealth. It cannot be found in fame. You see, what we're talking about this morning is no respect of persons. You see famous people committing suicide. Amen? Famous people. They've got it. They looked for it in wealth. It wasn't there because they had all the money. They had money to burn. They looked for it in fame. Most of them looked for it in partner after partner, sexually. They could not find the peace that was missing in their life. So they end their life. So it's not, it's not just, it just doesn't affect poor people who have no hope and have given up or old people that are so sick they can't take the pain. No, this thing affects teenagers. This thing affects those who are rich and famous. This thing affects those who have political power. Amen? So finding political power will not bring you this hope that we're talking about this morning. Drugs will not bring you this hope that we're talking about this morning. Alcohol will not bring you this hope that we're talking about this morning. Amen? Only Jesus Christ. And I like what one preacher said. I've seen a quote of him. I don't quote him very often because he usually don't say anything worth quoting, but this was worth quoting. He said, you're looking for hope in all the wrong places. Hope has a name. Glory to God. Can I say that again? Hope has a name. Amen. 
And that name is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. And he's beckoning you saying, whosoever will. You don't have to be hopeless anymore. Amen. Pain and heartache don't have to be your neighbor's. You don't have to live in a town called misery. Hallelujah. And I'm not just preaching this to lost people out there today. We've got born again believers walking around that look like they've been sucking on sour grapes. Amen. And dude, they're not experiencing the joy and the fullness of the salvation that comes with having your hope and your faith in Jesus Christ. And what he did on the cross, realizing that everything, every way has already been made for you today. Amen. We're talking about hope, real hope. It doesn't come in your political party. It doesn't come in your money. Amen. It doesn't come in all of these things that the world is looking for hope in. It cannot be found in anything that this world has to offer. We can name off a lot of things, but we'll just sum it all up right there. It cannot be found in anything that this world has to offer. And so many see their life or their circumstances hopeless. But there is hope to be found today. You may look around and see this nation and the turn that it's taken and the things that are happening and all of the things. It seems like as if this nation is on a, a spiral down slide, on a toboggan a slide to hell. Amen. But there is hope today. If you'll turn to the one in whom hope is found, glory to God. Hallelujah. There is hope today. Amen. There is hope uh, nah, nah. And not just hope, write this down if you're taking notes, not just hope for today, but hope for tomorrow and hope for eternity. You see, this is the only place this hope can be found. Jesus Christ, amen. The same yesterday, today, and forever. Not just hope for today, but hope for tomorrow and hope for eternity. That is the hope that is found in the Lord. And without the Lord today, you are that man named hopeless, miserable, amen, hallelujah, without God. You may think I've got the house I want. I've got the car I want. I've got the job I want. And see, if those are the things that you're trying to get to satisfy that longing, Sister Patty, you'll never be satisfied. Amen? Because they'll always come out with a better house, a better car, better clothes, better things that your heart will long for because you think that that will fill that empty void that's inside of you. But there, anybody ever worked a jigsaw puzzle before? Amen? I have. I don't like them. They're frustrating. I can't figure them out. Don't give me none. Amen? I'll put them in the yard sale. But if, if I've seen people work them and I've tried to help my sisters, Carolyn or Wanda, somebody used to, maybe in Reenie, somebody used to work, might have been Reenie, used to work jigsaw puzzles. Uncle David used to work jigsaw puzzles. He'd work on it, and they'd put it on a piece of cardboard. They'd slide it under the bed, get it back out a day or two later, and they'd work on it some more. But I'd mess with them a little bit. Enough to know that there is a place for each piece in that box, and no other piece will fit. Amen. Amen. You can have it all together. And there's one piece missing. It don't matter how much you look. It doesn't matter. You can go to another box that's got puzzle pieces in it. Won't fit. That one piece is all that will complete that puzzle. You got a place inside of you. That there ain't but one thing. There ain't but one person that, that can fill that place. And it is Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. One place. And you will be unfinished. Until you realize that because you'll try to fill it. You can take another piece. I've tried that. That looks close enough. No, nope, don't fit. Even if you can squeeze it in there. It don't look right. It ain't, it, ain't, it ain't right. Amen. That's what people do. That empty spot. I'll get me a new car. Nope, still not complete. I know what it is. I need that. Nope, still not complete. I need that one. I need this, that, and the other. No, you need Jesus Christ in order to be complete. Amen? In order to have this hope that we're talking about this morning. In Ephesians, the second chapter. Is that where I told you to go? 11th verse. Ephesians 2 and 11. Wherefore remember that ye being in past, ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, 
being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant, covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Now did you hear what the Scripture said? That you used to be, you were without Christ, you were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers from the covenant of promise, covenants of promise, having no hope. Why were you without hope? Because you were without God. Amen? But verse 13 says, But now. I could have named this morning's message, But now. Amen? See, we used to be hopeless. <laughs> but now, in Christ Jesus, you who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the Republican Party. By the denominations, by the Southern Baptist Convention, by the United Pentecostal Convention, you who were sometimes afar off are now made nigh by your works. Uh uh. See, a lot of people try to fill that void with religion. A lot of people try to fill that void with, I'm going to be good enough. And that will fill that empty void. It won't either. Because you'll never be good enough. Amen. You who were sometimes afar off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. If you're out there this morning, whether you're watching this video or you're listening by radio or by CD, however you are, if you are without Christ, then you are without hope in this world. You are without God. But... You need to become part of this but now crowd. Amen? If you turn to Jesus and put your faith and your hope in Him until you realize He is your only hope, that's the reason you have no hope. Is because you're searching for it in all the wrong things. You can trust in your health. Your health will fail. You can trust in your money. Your money will fail. You can trust in the stock market. Your stock market will fail. You can trust in your political candidate and your political candidate will fail. But you can trust in Him and He will never fail. We're talking about having hope this morning that cannot be shaken by the things of this world because it's not in the things of this world. Listen to what he says. For He is our peace who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition. The veil has been torn, in twi torn from top to bottom in twain. Amen. Torn down the, he has broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Listen to what he says. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments, contained in ordinances, for to make himself of twain one new man. So making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body. How did he do that? He's fixing to tell us. By the cross. Somebody say, by the cross. By the cross. Having slain the enmity thereby. By the cross, by His blood. But now, I love that. But now, ye who were far off, ye who were without hope, without God in this world, you couldn't take part in the covenants of God. But now, through faith in His finished work, we are no longer hopeless. You know the words of that song said, love built a road right to where He was. Amen. And, and He said he, he began to walk and follow in the signs to a place called Calvary. He took a right turn at the crossroad that led Him up to Calvary. Amen. That led Him up to Calvary. Amen. And now they call Him Hope for short because His old name don't fit anymore. We are no longer aliens. We are no longer lost. We are no longer without hope because of Jesus Christ. Christ in you. You, the hope of glory. Amen. We have a hope today that should be unmovable by the things of the world. No matter what we go through, it should never, never cause us to lose hope. Amen. Romans 15 and 13, you can write this down. I'll probably be there and gone before you get there. Now the God of hope. What did that say? The God of hope. That's the God we serve today. Not a God of hopelessness. Not a God of impossibilities. Amen. But a God in whom all things are possible. A God in whom hope, I'm talking about true hope, can be found. Amen. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy, peace, and believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. 
These are things that every child of God should have, knowing that with Him, nothing is hopeless. And knowing like my sweet mama testified this morning that no matter what today holds, no matter what tomorrow may bring, you are not alone. He is with you. And as long as Jesus is with you, you have hope. Amen? As long as Jesus is with you, you have hope this morning. And not just in this life. I told you that it's hope for today. It's hope for tomorrow. It's hope for eternity. Not just in this life do we have this hope. But the Bible says that if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we're of all men most miserable. Amen. Amen. You see, church, the world, we, we get our eyes so focused on the world that we think this is it. This is not, even, this is not our stopping place. I'm just a pilgrim, amen, traveling through this wearisome land. If the Lord tarries, before long we'll all be a memory to someone else. And we will have moved on to eternity, amen. So if all we had was just hope in this life, think about it. The things that we go through, the things that you see, the, the circumstances and situations. If this is the only place you had hope, we would be miserable because we'd have nothing forward. We'd have nothing to look forward to. But thank God, we don't have just hope in this life. We can't. We, we don't just have to have. Can't just have hope for today and just have hope for tomorrow. But we can have e hope for eternity this morning, knowing that there is a heaven and we're going to go there someday by the blood of Jesus if we'll keep our faith and our trust in Him. When we stood in front of the casket of Brother Ronnie a couple of Sundays ago, he his own body was there, but he was there. Amen. The Apostle Paul said to be absent from the body. And that's what Brother Ronnie was. That's what he is. Amen. Absent from the body. Where's he at? He is present with the Lord. Amen. This is just a place in our journey. This is not our destination. Glory to God. Our destination is heaven. Amen. Hold on to Jesus. Talk about hope this morning. Hold on to hope. Mm. Knowing that no matter what you face, there's a better day of coming. Amen. Amen. Oh, I could preach this morning. Hallelujah. Not just this life, but in death. There is hope in death. Amen. Proverbs 13 and 12 says, Hope deferred maketh the heart sick. But when the desire cometh, it is a tree of life. What's that saying? That's saying it's not always easy to hold on to hope, but it is always worth it. Amen. You know the Scripture? Weeping may endure for the night. But joy cometh in the morning. Amen. It ain't, gonna, it ain't always going to be easy. But it is going to be worth it. Amen. Amen. It is going to be worth it. The road might get long. But it's going to be worth it. The storm may get bad, but it's going to be worth it. Amen. The trial may get bad, but it's going to be worth it. Amen. Amen. That's why our, our hope is not doesn't come from the things of this world. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ, my righteousness. Amen? That's where our hope should be today. And one of the reasons we've got so many miserable Christians is because they're, 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 uh, they're hooking their rope to the wrong wagon. They're trying to find joy and fulfillment in Christ through things of the world, and you can't do that. They can only be found through Jesus Christ and the things of His Word and the things of His Spirit. Talking about hope this morning that religion cannot give you. Amen? Talking about hope this morning that your favorite preacher cannot give you. We can point you to where hope can be found, but you're going to have to go. You're going to have to make the right turn at the crossroad that leads you to Calvary. Amen? And that's where you're going to find hope. Amen? Somebody said the treasure's at the end of the rainbow. No, the treasure's at the foot of the cross. Amen? Hallelujah. Get to the foot of the cross and you will find. Hallelujah. And don't just get there, get up and leave, but stay at the foot of the the cross. Amen. That's where all joy and fullness of Christ is found today. What He has done on the cross of Calvary. Amen. Amen. We have an eternity to look forward to. I can read this. Turn with me to 1 Thessalonians 4 and 13. I don't hear no boats yet. Maybe the Lord let them all run out of gas. 
Hallelujah. 1 Thessalonians 4 and 13. We're talking about hope for eternity. Not just today, not just tomorrow. That car you got might make you feel happy today. It might make you feel happy tomorrow. It might blow up Tuesday. Amen? Your circumstance. That man that you have, he might make you happy today and feel warm all over. I know you ladies in here can understand what I'm talking about. He might make you feel happy tomorrow and warm all over. He might make you mad come Tuesday. Amen? He'll probably make you mad before the day's over. Your hope can't be found in a person. That emptiness inside you can't be found. Well, I'll, I'll just get me a different wife. I'll get me a different husband. I'll get me a different girlfriend. I'll get me a different boyfriend. No. The happiness you're looking for can't be found in people. Only in Jesus Christ. First Thessalonians 4 and 13. We're talking about hope for eternity. But I would not have you to be ignorant. Brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that sorrow not, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Did you hear that? He don't want us to sorrow as those who have no hope. He wants us to know today that there is a heaven. He wants us to know that there is a resurrection. He wants us to know that there is a boat going down the river. That He wants us to know today that there is hope to be found in the fact that there is this life is not all it is. There is a heaven to gain. Amen? There is a heaven to gain. There is a rapture. There is a trump that's going to blow. There is a voice that's going to call out your eternal son of Bahia. It's going to call out your name one day. And you're going to be called up together to meet the Lord. Aren't you glad that you believe in heaven and you believe in what the things the Bible teaches and you don't believe in reincarnation? Amen. If reincarnation was real, it probably wouldn't work out for me. I'd probably come back as a cow and end up on somebody's bun at McDonald's. Amen? But in their twisted way of thinking, you die, you come back as something. You die, you come back as something. You die, you come back as something. If you believe that, don't kill that fly. It might be your granny. Amen? Amen. But today we have a blessed hope. Glory to God. I said we have a blessed hope. Amen. Listen to what the writer said. Sorrow not as those that have no hope. For if you believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with Him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that they which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be called up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Amen. Hold on, church. It's going to be worth it after a while. Amen. Hold on, church. It'll be worth it after all. After all of these struggles, after all of these trials, after all of this climbing, it's going to be worth it after all. If you could talk to Sister Vani today, she would encourage you to hold on. It's worth it. Amen. If you could talk to Brother Edgar this morning, he would encourage you to hold on. Church, it's worth it. If you could talk to Brother Hinton this morning, he would encourage you, hold on. It's worth it. Glory to God to step inside the gate. It's worth anything and everything that you'll give up or go through in this world. Yeah. It's going to be worth it all. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. First Peter 3 and 15, write this down. Don't have to go there. Sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you. The hope that is in you. Christ in you. The hope of glory. Christians, I mentioned this a while ago, Christians walking around down and out as if they had no hope. Amen? But because of the cross today, we have hope. Amen? We have hope. This is the message that will give hope to the lost. This is the message because you don't have to be hopeless anymore. You're not a lost cause. Amen. 
Thank God one day he came by. You remember in school they used to have a lost and found. Thank God one day Jesus came by the lost and found us. Amen. The world might have cast you to the side as hopeless, impossible. You may look at people today, we may look at people today, and we might think there ain't no hope for them. Oh, yes, there is, and his name is Jesus. They would have looked at Paul or Saul of Tarsus and they would have said there's no hope for him. Oh, yes, there is. There was on the road to Damascus, Jesus Christ. Amen. He is our hope today. He is the only source. He is the only piece of the puzzle, that missing piece that you're missing today. Hallelujah. And He will give you hope. If you're out there under the sound of my voice and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, put your faith and your trust in You've tried alcohol. You've tried drugs. You've tried religion. You've tried anything and everything the world has to offer. Try Jesus. Try Jesus. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. Amen. This is a message that not only brings hope to the... And I'm getting ready to close here in a few minutes. Not only brings hope to the lost, but it brings hope to the Christian. You see, we have hope for today that no matter what I'm going through, He's going to make it all right, all right, amen. He's going to go through it with me and He's going to use it for my good. We have hope in knowing that no matter what we face tomorrow, everything's going to be okay. Amen. Huh. I might be dead come daylight tomorrow morning. Don't worry about me. Everything's okay. Amen. Everything's going to be all right. We have hope for today no matter what we're facing. We have hope for tomorrow no matter what we will face. We have hope for eternity because heaven's sounding sweeter all the time. Amen. Heaven's sounding sweeter. We've got a heaven to look forward to. Titus 2 and 13 says, Looking for the blessed hope Amen. and the glorious appearing of the, of our, of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. One of these days, what John saw was going to come to pass in the book of Revelation, we are going to experience firsthand. That place where there's no more dying. That place yeah. where there's no more sorrow. That place where there's mama where there's no more pain and there's no more sickness. That place where there's no more death. No more funerals. No more graveyards. Amen. Hope for eternity. Hope for eternity. There's no hope to be found in anything that this world has to offer. And you can have it all today. You can trade your soul for all of the pleasure and power and wealth and fame that this world has to offer and it will gain you nothing. Nothing. The word hope is in the Word of God 130 times. Impossible for us to cover everything today. That deals with hope. Matter of fact, I think we'll pick it up next week, Lord willing. But we're talking about hope this morning. Something that so many today are walking around without. Without any hope. But there is hope to be found today. And that hope is found in Jesus Christ. Amen. And not just for the sinner. But for the saint, we need to realize today you can join every religious organization that there is. won't satisfy you. You can make all the money. There's people that don't have time to go to church because they're too busy working trying to make the money. You try to find your satisfaction in your family. You're doing yourself and your family a disservice by not serving God. Amen. Your family needs somebody to be the light. Amen? Because they're probably too busy to be the light yourself. Too caught up in other things. But we're talking about hope this morning, not just for the lost, but for the Christians. And we need to realize that our hope cannot be built on religion or denominations or anything else other than Jesus Christ. Amen? My, my, my. Talking about hope this morning. Hallelujah. And we will, Lord willing, pick this up again next week and maybe get to finish this message. Hallelujah. And look at some examples in the Word of God where it looked hopeless. But with God, all things are possible and nothing is 
hopeless. Amen. Keep your faith and your trust in Jesus today. Someone else have something before we go. Hallelujah. You know, we keep our faith.